Will Pump, soluciones que fluyen. Non-clogging vortex impeller design. What I want you guys to see from this slide here is that a vortex impeller sits up very high in the pump volute and its ability to pass a solid is de dependent on the distance between the bottom of that pump volute and the top of that impeller. So if that distance is two inches, it'll pass a two inch solid. This thing's spinning at high RPM, taking the fluid, putting it to the inside of the volute and out the discharge without really coming into contact much with the fluid itself. The way they operate basically is when they start to spin and the fluid is drawn into the bottom of the pump, it's taking and it's pushing that fluid to the inside of that pump volute. And the vortex impeller really doesn't come in contact with the fluid much at that point. It's basically like that ride at the fair that you used to get on. Uh, I don't remember what they called it, but you stood against the wall and the thing would start to spin and then you get sucked to the wall and the floor would drop out, and through centrifugal force, you were, you were stuck to the wall. Really, the same thing is going on inside that, that pump with the fluid. It's being drawn in through centrifugal force. It's being sucked to the inside of that wall, and then through, out through the discharge of the pump. Because of that, vortex impellers are really good at passing solids and not clogging. Um, the downside to a vortex impeller versus... Impellers like you would see here, this is what we call a, a semi-open impeller. Um, these are a lot more efficient. So you're going to get people that's, that are going to have a third horsepower sump pump going against the 53. And they're going to say, well, we pump higher and we pump more than a 53. And they're probably right because they're probably using some sort of a variation of a, a, a semi-open or closed impeller, which is much more efficient. But what they don't tell you is those, those, are, those impellers are much more likely to clog and jam. So when you're, you know, you have a, a sump pump protecting your $50,000 investment that you just made in your basement, are you as concerned that maybe that pump can pump a little bit more, a little bit higher, or do you want that pump to not clog and jam and flood your basement? And that's the trade-off that we do use with Vortex impellers. We'll take a little bit less performance for reliability because we're really looking for the reliability side on, on a small sump pump. And we talked about the downside of a vortex impeller, impeller being you, that you do lose some efficiency. The other type of impellers that we talked about, the, the semi-open or closed impeller that you see here, you'll notice that when they're in the pump volute, those impellers come all the way down to the bottom. Matter of fact, you want that space to be as minimal as possible. And the reason you don't want any space between there is because you lose efficiency if there's any space between the bottom of that impeller and the volute, it's called blow-by. And so its ability to pass a solid is directly in correlation to the size or distance between these impeller veins. So that means that every solid that's passing through this pump that's spinning at high RPM has to, has to pass through those impeller veins. So you got, can you guys see how that would be a potential for a clog? especially if you've got stringy material or long material. That thing's spinning fast, and it's got it's to manipulate itself through those impeller veins. So again, much more efficient because those impeller veins are actually grabbing the water and discharging it, but a lot more likely to clog. Wheel pump. Soluciones que fluyen.